Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to say to everybody? Huh? What do you want to say to everybody? Not a thing. Not a thing. <laughs> Welcome, friends and fans, to another edition of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to Philadelphia with the cast of Boy Meets World, Girl Meets World. So without further ado, let's head on down to John Adams High School and see who we find. Our first guest is an actor whose work includes Kim Possible, Transformers, Robots in Disguise, and of course, Batman Beyond. Today he joins us as future Senator Eric Randall Matthews, aka Plays with Squirrels. Please welcome back our friend, Will Friedel. Hello. Hello. How are you, Maddie? I am good, Will. How you been? I'm good, thank you. Ah, so glad to, glad to have you back. Glad to have you back with all these very fantastic peers and castmates here from this show. And uh, how are things in your corner of the world? Everything's great. You know, it's the, the world is what the world is right now. We're all eking through as, as best we can, but uh, it's stuff like this that we look forward to, and it's fun to get back together with everybody from the show. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what everybody else has to say. Absolutely, my friend. Glad to have you back. A good health and good spirit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And next, he is an actor and singer whose roles include Superhuman Samurai, Cyber Squad, Brotherly Love, and Mrs. Doubtfire. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of Jack Hunter. Please welcome Matthew Lawrence. Hi, everybody. Hey, Matt. Hey, how you doing? what's going on? Hey, Matt. I'm good. Hey, buddy. How are you, man? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm all right. Not too bad. You know. Good. Good. Getting through. <laughs> yeah. Getting through in these curious times is the new awesome. Well, it is. It is. It's awesome. It's great. <laughs> Absolutely is. Well, Matt, everything is good in your corner of the world? Yeah, everything's pretty good, man. You know, I'm uh, you know, married. Um, uh, got a new dog. You know, uh, starting to get work back, you know, coming back in. So things are going all right. Right on. So glad to have you here, boss. It's a pleasure. Yeah, man. Pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm. Uh, and next, she is an actress and director whose credits include Daylight, Friday After Next, and Confessions of Isabella. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of level-headed Angela Moore. Please welcome Trina McGee. Trina McGee, not always so level-headed. <laughs> well, in, in, in this cavalcade of these kids, sometimes you were the voice of reason, you know. You were slightly less, slightly less crazy than the others. Yeah, <laughs> just slightly. Have, have, you, have you met Mr. Squirrel? Oh, uh, you know what? I don't know if I really met him in person. I think I always like was right after him or before him. Right, right, that's true. That's Every true. episode of that. But I love squirrels. Right. I love squirrels. Uh, <laughs> Trina, how are you? I'm doing great. I feel great. My kids are grown. Um, I'm happily married and I'm I'm doing good, you know, just hanging out and getting through like everybody else in this crazy world right now, you know. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's so glad to have you here. And uh, thank, you so, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> of course. How could we not? And next, he is an actor and director whose work includes Kim Possible, Cabin Fever, and Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Today, he joins us as a director of several episodes of Girl Meets World. And as his performance as best buddy, Sean Hunter, please welcome Ryder Strong. Hey! hey. hey. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? <laughs> we are all good, Ryder. How are you, sir? I'm good. I am. Uh, I am uh, back here in LA after uh, doing a road trip around the country for like five weeks. So now settling back in. Uh, my six-year-old son has started school this week, so that's a big, uh, wow. big step forward because uh, he missed kindergarten. Yeah. Kindergarten was all virtual, so now he's actually in first grade, which is awesome. Um, yeah, you know, getting through. Uh, absolutely, man. That's what it's all about these days. Well, Ryder, so glad to have you here. And uh, so great that the, the kid's in first grade. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we're, skipping, we're, skipping, we're skipping kindergarten. That's uh, You can say he's advanced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an acceleration plan. And next, he is an actor and director whose credits include Bosch, Deadwood, and The Right Stuff. Today, he joins us as a director of several episodes of Boy Meets World and his performance as Patriarch Alan Matthews. Please welcome William Russ. Hey, hey, is this on? Is this on? It's on. <laughs> What's up, guys? Pleasure to be here. Oh, glad to have you here, boss. Uh, I, I was going to say, a big fan of Wise Guy. So thank oh, you so much for you. your participation in that. And uh, I could talk to you all day about Deadwood, but we're here to talk about Boy Boy Meets World. But again, a big fan of your, your total career. Thank you so much for everything you've done. You, I'm sold. I'm very, very fortunate, uh, Ham, to be here. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> was yeah. so. Uh, too many wonderful people. These aren't some of them, but I have met oh, all. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, uh, let, let's let's we have, let's bring us somebody we hope you uh, hold in your regard. She is uh, an actress whose work includes Home Improvement, The Nightmare Room, and Charmed. Today, she joins us to discuss her performance as matriarch Amy Matthews. Please welcome Betsy Randall. Here I am. Betsy. There you are. <laughs> Hi. I love seeing all your faces. It's just so good. Oh, Betsy, <laughs> how are you in your corner of the world? Well, I'm pretty darn happy. Um, my son and my and his wife and, and our two grandbabies moved to Sweden because her job was there. So we, we hadn't seen them for an, a year and a half because of the pandemic. Wow. So this past summer, um, they came home to visit for three weeks, and it just happened to be John's and my 50th wedding anniversary. Wow. So we celebrate it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> know, yeah. Wow. But yeah. We, we actually renewed our vows on video right out, right on the other side of the pool. We made the kids um, swim for about two hours so that they weren't noisy. <laughs> so, so great. We just, I'm so happy right now. I'm still glowing about that. So that's Oh, okay. you have it right, too. Betsy, congratulations on a 50th. That is, that's a, that's an achievement and wish you all the happiness and continued happiness with that. Thank you. Who knew? How <laughs> uh, indeed. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, our final guests, uh, please welcome. She is an Emmy award-winning actress whose roles include Little House on the Prairie, Twins, and St. Elsewhere. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Dean Lila Bolander. Please welcome back Bonnie Bartlett and... He is an Emmy award-winning actor whose body of work includes Saint Elsewhere, Knight Rider, Captain Nice, and of course, 1776. Today he joins us to discuss the role of George Hamilton Feeney. Please welcome William Daniels. Hi, Hi. Bill. Bill, we're on. Uh, I'm on? <laughs> yes, you're on. We just we just sent our last grandchild off to college at an NYU today. Oh, wow. That's the last one. Uh, and we wow. have one of them is going to be uh, a doctor, and she's just going to be starting. Oh, my God. It's years and years of work and money, 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 money. <laughs> no, no, say hello. <coughs> say hello. Hello. <laughs> what do you want to say to everybody? Huh? What do you want to say to everybody? Not a thing. Not a thing. <laughs> You haven't changed a bit, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> He's enjoying all of you. Yeah. Uh, well, to stick with body, welcome back. So good to see you again. And and William, thank you so much for joining us here today. And thank you all for joining us here on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Our team is going through our chat room right now, pulling out the questions for us. In the meantime, I, I just like to put this out. What's What's become a treasured memory that you've taken from your experiences on Boy Meets World or Girl Meets World? Who are you asking? He's going to be funny. He's going to be Okay, I'll start. I'll start. Go, go, go ahead, start, Will. Well, I might as well. Uh, it's the, the, it's the, the people. Bad on me. No. <laughs> it's the people. That's, yes. that's my answer. We all get along. I mean, this is let, it's let talk. Talk with everybody. See, it's, Bonnie's telling us what to do. So it's uh, <laughs> yeah. it's just all of us being together again. That's the memory. These are the people are that I that I take with me, <laughs> and and Bill and Bonnie. Yeah, it, it certainly does feel like family for real. <laughs> yeah. wow. it really was Someone else can go now. It's a yeah. treasured time, and uh, if you're an actor, especially to have yeah. a family. I so many years well, I'm freezing up. Am I freezing up here? Oh, yeah. 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 Betsy, what were you saying? Uh, you, you want to talk about the I, I feel like I'm freezing up. Is everybody freezing up there? Or is it just me? They had, uh, they had a, a bee that they tranquilized <laughs> alive. Unfortunately, it became alive on my face. Um, uh, it bit me. Oh no! Yeah. I remember that. But you know, those are the things that happen. Uh, <laughs> on the face, my God! Now that was the Mickey Dolan's direct. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, we were there. We were like standing behind him. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, me, the bee that stung. 
Hey, <laughs> hey Will, you said Mickey Dolan. Oh, I, I think that's very funny. Wow, yeah, that was that was a Mickey Dolan's directed episode, I believe. The one with the bees. <laughs> I remember that. So if, if William Daniels, if the wow. voice of Knight Rider getting bitten by a bee isn't weird enough, it was directed <laughs> by one of the monkeys. Yeah, <laughs> the amusement of everybody else. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> really oh, my God. By, by a monkey. It was directed by one of the monk. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I couldn't believe that. <laughs> oh, wow. I bet the, the makeup person must have loved their job that day. Mm. <laughs> I think one of my favorite memories is seeing Matt and, um, and Will dressed up as women. I wasn't, I think I was kind of in that episode, but I remember walking on set one day and seeing them and I was like, whoa, <laughs> they were very attractive women. One of us was a very attractive woman and the other one was me. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> you know, I still get, I still get people that bring that up and they show me pictures of that. Very inconvenient <laughs> times, and it's great. Yeah. <laughs> and what they do nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Ryder, you got one? Uh, you know, I was just remembering that right near the end of the show, like, there's a, there's an episode, it was in the last season, we all uh, tackle Mr. Feeney in a hug. Do you guys oh, remember that? this? Yeah. And it was supposed to just be like, oh, you love us. And we grab him. And while we were filming it, and I have this outtake somewhere because Will and I got a bunch of the outtakes. We grabbed him and he fell back onto the desk and we broke the desk. Like, yeah. the desk. Just, you guys remember this? Yeah. It was one of the funniest things. It's yeah. like, we're all acting. We're like, oh, we love each other. And then the whole desk just falls and we like panic for, you know, 20 yeah. seconds. And then we realize everybody's okay. And then we're just all dying laughing again. Yeah. That's like the classic Boy Meets World moment for me. Yeah. So. <laughs> Turned into a pro wrestling move. Exactly. It was so funny. Oh my God. <laughs> he threw the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, uh, Betsy, what's, uh, what's something that you've taken from your experience in all this? Oh God. Um, well, let's see. Um, well, first of all, I was so glad to keep the job <laughs> for seven years, but I also, <laughs> but I also just fell in love with this family. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I did. I, I I fell in love with Rusty. And I fell in love with all of you, and I just felt so lucky that we got along and had funny things happening. And I loved it when we had to do period pieces. I always liked that the period pieces. I like to wear the costumes, but I don't know. I mean, there isn't any. There's there's not one that's coming up. It's oh, one thing, one thing. Whenever I hear the word pottery barn. I say pottery barn, pottery barn, because that's what Will said on an episode, and I just thought that was it stuck with me. So you're just pottery barn to me. Oh, I love uh, it. That's I remember, nice. You know what I remember, Betsy? What I remember, one of the things that always makes me laugh is whenever our original, we did like a new opening title sequence every season, essentially, or close to it. Yeah. And the season we did is like the classic like we all kind of like look at the camera and it's all like and right. Betsy remember the first time we watched it together as a group you grabbed me when your scene came on and you're like smiling at the camera and you said that's my please watch us on TV look <laughs> <laughs> and that always stuck with me you give this smile this great that's smile so like, please watch us on TV and it it was that's so well, it, it worked. That I always remember the show that you did where you were out all night or something, and it was kind of yeah. serious. What was that about, Betsy? When I was out all night. Yeah. You mean when you when you when, out when all we all night, everybody was looking for you and hmm. you remember that? I was very upset <laughs> that show. <laughs> Were we running away and having a, a fling far away? Oh, wait, that was it. Yes. Yeah. 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 I had a little, you know, thing on. I love that. And then I we ran into and, 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 and Corey. We ran into them and they go, yeah. what are you doing here? Yeah, cool yeah the, the hotel episodes in the wrong keys. Yes. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, oh, that, that, that was that was a memorable. Oh, was that the Siobhan episode? <laughs> was that the one we thought that with the prom, or was it before that? 
Oh, gosh. Oh, no, I, think no. <laughs> I do remember one thing, and that is when Olivia Hussey came on. And I said, Olivia Hussey, Juliet is going to be on the show. Okay, I went straight to my hair and makeup and said, you got to do a really good job on me. <laughs> you got to be there. And she had her own makeup artist and everything. And throughout the whole week, she held my hand the whole time. She was so nervous. And just because she wasn't used to a, a live audience or anything. And, oh, and here I was feeling, gee, here I am taking care of her. <laughs> she turned out to be a really good friend. I love her dearly. <laughs> oh, so very, cool. very nice. And, and, and well, you make a good point about uh, how the sh uh, this is why I think was a uh, was unlike most other shows, especially towards that target audience, is that the show evolved. The show was not afraid to embrace people growing up and everything else. I mean, you look at previous sitcoms or whatever with kids, and it seemed like they were in middle school or junior high for about six, seven years, and in high school they were on the eight year plan or something, and. The show actually uh, uh, turned it on its corner, kind of really embraced it. And I think that's that's sort of the testament to it. And that's why it resonates so much with this generation, you know, because it's like literally when people say, oh, I grew up with you. They really mean it with the with these shows. They really yeah. do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I tell people when they stop me, I say, I raised you. And they go, you really did. When the movie, when the movie uh, Richard Linklater's movie Boyhood came out, there was all this big deal being made about like they went back every year and filmed the kid as he grew older. Older, I was like, you mean like a TV show? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, good point. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a memory I have that really isn't about the show. I remember a day it was Halloween, the first year, and you guys. What was amazing? You must have been eleven, twelve, and I still have a vision of you going from school across the lot in a line, all in your Halloween costume. <laughs> oh. to work. And I can still see you as a line, just hopping along and having a great time. Oh. And thinking, wow, these kids are great and they work really yeah. hard. Oh yeah. And I'll never I, that's very sweet. They're still, in, so in my family home that I grew up in, in Connecticut, there's a, a whole picture wall. And on that picture wall is a picture of Ryder and I. I was 16, 17. He was 13, 14 as Batman and Joker from, from oh, Halloween. We went yeah. all out. Remember, Ryder? We yeah. went and got- And like, I think Ben, was Ben dressed costume. as Howard Stern that year? Was that the year yes. that Ben dressed as Howard Stern? <laughs> <laughs> it was a great yeah. It was that great. Was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a ton of fun. I see that picture all the time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what version of Batman and Joker? Uh, this was. Oh, uh, this, yeah. Oh, eighty nine. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Nicholas and Key. Tim Burton. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. When you well, when you bring up Batman, I got to do a follow up. You know that. <laughs> of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Uh, well, guess our thank you for indulging my capricious curiosity. Our team is let me know we're good to go to audience questions. So let's go ahead and roll our first one. And. This comes from Ryan, who wants to know, with three cast members named Will or William, was it confusing? They all go by different versions. We had Will, Rusty, and Bill. Nobody went by William, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of confusion. <laughs> As we used to say, call me anything you want, just don't call me late for lunch. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Great Thank to be you. back. Thank you. I'll be here for the next half hour. <laughs> exactly. All right. That, 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 that totally works. Thank you, Ryan. There's your answer. All right. Everybody's had it. That's very good. Hey, what do we have next? From Tracy. Is there anything from the set that you kept that has meaning to you? Oh, I stole a lot of stuff. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I took a pen from a jacket and a, and a blue dress from one of my last episodes, you know. I have a couple of sweaters <laughs> evening gowns. I got a lot of evening gowns. That was nice. This yeah. is oh, Dr. Nice. Papson. So oh, yeah. Dr. Papson, we were not allowed to have real labels on our show. And our set decorator guy was named Mark Papson. So he would make all the sodas himself. And I really? saved... A, a signed by Mark Papson, a <laughs> signed by Dr. Papson. The doctor himself? Yeah, you got it in the doctor front of you. Himself, <laughs> and it sits here yeah. in my sound oh, booth, yeah. and it's, it's yeah. I've had it since the show. So yeah, it sits here in the in my sound booth the whole time. So there you wow. go. Bill has an entire wardrobe. Tell him about your wardrobe, how you would do that every, every season. You would take in old clothes, exchange them for the wardrobe. 
So he has a closet full of Feeny jackets. Feeny clothes. He's lived on them ever since on those clothes. He <laughs> <laughs> changed them with the girl. Every year he'd bring in, he'd come out and he'd go in the closet and he'd pull out all kinds of old clothes and put them in the thing and take them in and he'd give her the old clothes and she'd give him all the all the wardrobe from the show. Which was hey, that's a good trick. Very nice. That, I well, that was a good move. Wasn't yeah, that was a good move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well it was a way to, it was a way to get around because Disney had a rule that they, they were supposed to keep everything. They always yes. wanted to have it. Which means there's a warehouse somewhere they had a warehouse. close. Sitting I, kind of cheap. I kept some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I got I took, the, I, did take, I took the leather jacket that my character wore. Uh, oh, my and jacket. then I get into that. Yeah. It was my it started jacket, with Will's, but it became mine. I mean, <laughs> I think it's pretty clear it was mine. Do they know you took it, Will? Do they know? Yeah, they know. I, I got a call two weeks after the show. This is a, a true story. Two weeks after uh -huh. the show, asking me where a single pair of black socks was. Yes. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Do you know we you were missing one pair of black socks? Do you had it? And I was like, I might have, but I was like, no. It was amazing. Uh, See, you should have replaced it with a pair of white socks, like like <laughs> like William did. Yeah. Not a bad, not a bad call. <laughs> not a bad call. <laughs> Me too. Oh my goodness, Matt! Uh, did you uh, uh, happen to find yourself in possession of anything from the show? That's how you. No, I was phrase. just. I was just thinking about it. No, I'm kind of bummed. I didn't take anything. I. I, I didn't take anything. <laughs> that that. That's fine. You, 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 you're a joke, but I don't think it's appropriate. So I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go there. Well, you don't. You don't want that sinister call from Disney. So that's absolutely yeah, fair. Exactly. Uh, exactly. And uh, uh, Russ, did you uh, pick up anything? I took everything I could get my hands on. <laughs> <laughs> I had three or four houses at a time. I was just storing crap from Disney. <laughs> I have plates. I have cups. I have silverware. Yeah. <laughs> I have underwear. Oh, my God, Rusty. <laughs> you have Disney oh, God, underwear? You. Uh, wow. Well, you have Disney yeah. underwear? No, I don't. It was... It was yeah, it was. It, they were pretty tight. Okay. <laughs> you could only have three hot dogs okay. in a sitting. Uh, Tracy, thank you. Very fun question. And what do we have next? Here's one of Catherine, and they, she wants to know what was it like filming the "Men Are Idiots" dance scene? <laughs> oh, wow. was that our <clears throat> disco scene? Yeah, that was the hot stuff scene. Oh yeah. my god! How much fun was it? It was great. Yeah, it was great. We had a ball. Mr. Daniels just took yeah. control, and we followed his steps all the way. He, did. he added a bunch of stuff to the day. He added this oh, thing. Yeah. 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 That's great. Something about dancing. <laughs> Yeah, there was the yeah there was the uh, uh, the the so sort of the disco episode where we started dancing, and they mentioned. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah, oh, we did our disco. The episode it was like an it was like an homage to Full Monty, I think, right? Yeah, it was, it was like the Full Monty had just right. come out. Yeah. There's the whole idea right. that like men don't know how to dance, and we go up and learn how to dance. Homage. I love that. <laughs> I remember. I remember actually being pretty nervous, like because they brought a choreographer, and we yeah, like yeah. Had to, we worked all week, but you know it worked. I mean, Bill's become a meme. Like him, him dancing is all over really? the internet. Like, oh, he was a dancer, so. Yeah, and it was one of those one of those things that, as an actor, you can't do it halfway. You just, at some point you just say, "I'm jumping off the board," and <laughs> just going. And it was just everyone kind of got to that point and jumped off, and we had a great time. Yeah. Feel the fear, embrace it, and jump in. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Catherine, thank you. Very fun question. Uh, what do we have next? <clears throat> Hey, so for Sarah, ah, for everybody, what was each of your favorite episode to film that you can recall? You know what yours was. No. The last one. Oh. <laughs> so, so, the last one. Uh, my, uh, my favorite show was the last one. <laughs> uh, 
Thank God it was over, you know. <laughs> you, you, had, you had gotten all the clothes you'll ever need. Not very loose. Yes, I was. Yeah, well, but. Uh, Leaving the kids in it. Yeah, you no. Know, and, uh, yeah. Hey, Hannah Lyme, when they got all the help, they all left the classroom. And and he said, uh, I love you all. And I found that very uh, touching. Yeah. 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 Was. I love you all. Class dismissed. Class dismissed. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and your closet was full with all those clothes. So you That's didn't. Right. <laughs> And all the clothes he needed. Oh, 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 I love it. it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Did we do that? <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to go back and look at that. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mine was, I've talked about this, so I we just do very quickly. Uh, mine was the Scream episode. Well, that's yeah. what we call it. It's, yeah. And then there was Sean, because we had... Uh, we shot it like a film. There was no audience there that week. We were just making each other laugh the entire week. Uh, we could not get through it. Uh, it was each of us just trying to make to to crack each other up, and to the point where the the crew, our director, were getting a little testy because we were just having fun, and I, mm. it, it really bonded us together as a cast. Uh, I think more than almost any other show we'd ever done. Yeah. Um, and that was, and it was just so different than any other show we'd ever done that uh, that's the one that always sticks out of my mind, that whole filming process. Sure. Yeah, uh, yeah me too. So I'm with you on that one. It's so, great. I guess I guess it wasn't Mickey Dolan the stretch of that episode. <laughs> no, that was a McCracken, I think. Wasn't that a Jeff? Wasn't that a Jeff? That was McCracken. Yeah. Oh, okay. The only time McCracken's ever gotten mad at us. That was yeah. <laughs> the, ni the nicest guy in the world. Yes. You could not yeah. meet a nicer man. And we 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 broke him that, that we week. Broke him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The thing that oh, I thought was man. so different about the show, uh, all the kids, as you say, you're having fun. I don't think any of you were nervous. Or if you were, you hid it. All the grown-ups were nervous because, yeah. you know, we <laughs> acting for a long time and it's uh, in front of an audience and we don't want to make mistakes and we want it to be good. And it always seemed to me like the kids just were having a good time. And I, I, envied, <laughs> I envied that. Definitely. That's, Is that that's true? They had better memory oh, than we did. <laughs> <laughs> were you nervous? I, I was nervous at times. No, they weren't. They weren't nervous. <laughs> just the first time. So I was they very nervous. Know any better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but that's great that you could enjoy that like that. Yeah, yeah. I was, was I stayed in my dressing room <laughs> until it was time to go out there because they were fooling around and fooling around. I know, and Bill was always <laughs> nervous, and, always. Uh, and I felt they were not taking this seriously, <laughs> but I never spoke to them about it, and I never made any uh, judge, judgmental remarks about it. Because they were really good kids. I know, and they were having a good time doing it. Oh yeah, they were. They were. Definitely. Yeah. That does show. So, yeah. Trina, you got a favorite episode? Well, I'm gonna say my favorite was um, Angela's Men because I got to be dramatic and I got to to bring some of the drama. You know, I always make this joke with my family that at, at every episode of Boy Meets World, at 20 minutes, there's like a serious message and everything. So I kind of like that because I come from a more dramatic background and everything, and I was blessed to even get on the show being, you know, not so much of a comedy girl. So it was really cool to be able to do that and bring that kind of, you know, love, I love you and all that stuff to the show, you know, something a little sure. different, but still gliding right in with everybody else, you know. Sounds, sounds good. Sounds good. Ryder, you got one? I mean, the Scream episode is really hard to beat. That was yeah. clearly, <laughs> clearly the most fun we had. Although I, you know, listening to Trina, I agree. Like at the time, I, I really loved the drama too. You know, like I loved episodes where, uh, you know, I join a cult or you know, <laughs> I mean, by the, by the end, I was a little sick of it, but I remember at the time being excited at the prospect of, you know, getting to act and the challenge of like, you know, they would throw these crazy things in my character. So much trauma every week, drama and yeah, every week. 
<laughs> you made one bad decision every week. I yeah. know. <laughs> I mean, I remember because they were always late with scripts too. So I remember like getting pages during a table read, like where they were giving us the pages, like we were cold reading a table read in front of everybody. And I had like a three page monologue where Mr. Turner was in an accident and I like discovered God. And I just remember like doing this live, you know, and wow. it was terrifying, but also very yeah. fulfilling, you know, as an actor when I was like 17 or whatever, I was like, I can do it. Yeah, let's sink our teeth into this. So, you know. <laughs> I, I, you pulled it off, you pulled it off. I, I, I am more scared of doing table reads than I am in front of a live audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, remember, I remember just certain episodes. Like I remember the one with the one-armed bear trainer where we had the bear on the set. Yes. A live bear. <laughs> uh, jumping out of an airplane when we did our airplane right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rusty you know I think no joke I'm not making this up I, I could be wrong and somebody needs to google this but I'm pretty sure that bear that same bear went and killed somebody on a set <laughs> like no joke like no joke I think it was the same bear that they ended up using within some Will Ferrell movie that then ended up like snapping and killing someone oh my god <laughs> would you guys remember we did, the, we did an episode we did the episode where we were doing pranks on each other like back and forth and we had the bear for that episode and they handed out leaflets to everybody on set and the leaflets said don't move fast don't run from the bear and don't have food around the bear. And in the scene, we were covered in honey running away from the bear. And I remember just being like, why are we doing this? This is not good. Like, you literally said, don't do any of these things. And we were covered in honey. I don't want to be here. Put it in your head. Oh my gosh. I think I actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. You did, yeah, Rusty. Here's, here's the point. One. I, I just love the fact that they gave you a leaflet, which is something that hardly exists anymore. <laughs> yeah, Rusty, Rusty directed that episode. And that was working with Rusty when he was acting and directing was actually some, some fun because he would direct you in the middle of the scene while you were acting. <laughs> <laughs> you would like you would be in the middle of a scene and you'd be like, Corey, what are you doing? And Rusty would walk in like, I don't know what you guys are thinking. All right, now everybody turn to the left. And it's like <laughs> <laughs> move over there. Move over there. <laughs> <laughs> the camera. Oh, so funny. So funny. Uh, <laughs> uh gracious. Uh Betsy, you got a favorite episode? Well, I have a couple. One is, is that when I dressed up as Rosie the Riveter, I came out the door and there was Bill coming out on this other part of the lawn, you know, and came out his door and, and I was riveting on a plane. So I had like this riveting tool and Bill says, Amy, you're riveting. <laughs> and I said, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Bill. I don't know. I thought that was funny. And then the other thing was um, I did like to sink my teeth into a little drama sometimes, and sometimes they would write me the, the drama episodes, the two-parters and stuff. But one of them, um, ah, now I'm blanking on what it was. Hello. Um, oh, it was because uh, Corey and Topanga, these, I thought that they'd run off to escape and get married. And it was that two part episode, you know, where I said, I have something to say. And then will you end the episode by saying, well, I have something, I sure have something to say. But it was the one where I said, no, I don't approve. And I scold Bill Daniels for, you know, for Mr. Feeney for approving. And I mad at everybody about it. And it was kind of a nice meaty thing. It was kind of fun to be the, no, you're not ready. And I still didn't think they were ready after I did the episode. <laughs> 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 too young. Even though Rusty says, "Don't are you afraid she can't take care of him?" Anyway, it was a it was kind of a nice thing. <laughs> so there you go, Sarah. Great question. Thank you so much for that one. Uh, what do we have next? Here's one from Melissa who wants to know who was the hardest to get through the scenes because they kept making you laugh. <laughs> Ben. <laughs> ben would make us laugh. Will, <laughs> that was pretty funny. Will always made me burn. Will, Will <laughs> made always. us laugh. How do you burn? No, 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 Will definitely Will. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Will. <laughs> well, Ryder always made me, Ryder and I were not allowed to work together. 
literally we did two scenes i think in seven years together two or three scenes because we just couldn't get through them rusty and i would laugh a lot especially towards the end when we were like for some reason owned a camping store um <laughs> it's the hardest thing in the world to do a scene with people who are cracking you up like some people in this room <laughs> well no the, i mean when you watch outtakes on any show there are no giggles like the giggles you get when you're acting in front of a whole bunch of people it is, so true. It is absolutely <laughs> and you can't stop it and it, it it's this visceral feel and you just so the giggles on a set there's there's nothing like it i mean really it's nuts and Will, do you remember do you remember there was an episode that took place in a museum and rusty had a line and he couldn't remember his line. And so he just went like, really that? He's like, yes. I remember this. He just like spouted nonsense. And he would then looked at him like, what? And he was like, hey, I forgot my line. And you guys could not get through the scene. Like, no oh, matter no. what. Rusty also did a bunch of, the other thing he would do is whenever he got phlegmy, he wouldn't yell cut. He'd just say the next word as hard as he could. <laughs> So there's one time where he's like, well, what are you talking about? Maybe you just need a shrin. Glass of water. Uh, <laughs> the hardest thing about that is that when the actors get like that, and I've been on show, you can't hang out. When the scene cuts, you go away and you can't see that person until they call back. And of course, yeah. you come in the room and you're like... Yeah. Looking down, you can't. <laughs> I have a story about when Bill and I were doing stock in a tent in Wyoming, and it was wow. very, very cold, very, very cold, and only the Indians and the deer were out there watching us wow. in the audience. But anyway, Bill started all of a sudden his teeth started to chatter, and, he was, <laughs> and pretty soon everybody on the stage was chat their teeth were chattering. It was a whole bunch of chattering teeth that we could not control. Oh my god. <laughs> it gets you. It gets you. Oh my goodness. Melissa, thank you. Fun question. Uh what do we have next? Ed, here's one from Lynn. If you could give your character a piece of advice, what would it be? Hmm. Don't cut your hair. Fair, fair. Who's got another? He, what was the question again? The question is, if, if you could give your character on the show some advice, what would it be? What would you that's advise? A really, that's a really good question. What? To yourself, your character. About what? What would you give advice to your character? Stay in your dressing room until, <laughs> until, until they stop fooling around out there. <laughs> I come out. Okay. All right. Fair. <laughs> Fair. Uh, who's got another? Well, oh, it's, a, it's a deep question. I would say, writer, don't be drunk. <laughs> don't drink. Don't drink. That's your character. That's your character, not writer. There, I mean, like, there, uh, Sean needed so much advice. Like, yeah. <laughs> Sean was just, yeah. I, but probably I would just say to Sean, don't, it's not that bad, dude. Chill out. Yeah. yeah. Just try to enjoy yourself a little bit. And I, and That's I, good, might say, I might say to Alan, Stop giving so much advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's wow, what Mr. Beanie does every day now. He's giving advice to people all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there you I go. would probably tell Eric to um, maybe leave the Matthews family and join Tim Allen's family on home improvement. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would, that would probably have been the best advice I could have given him. <laughs> What, what is the question? <laughs> what about leaving Tim Allen? <laughs> oh, I said Eric, Eric should leave the Matthews family and join Tim Allen's family on home improvement. I was his mother, so I was already there. See, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I was there there's there. nowhere to run. I was already there, too, as the feminist that pissed him yeah, off. Yeah, you were there. That's right. And they I was there as the, a punk kid at a Halloween party. So. Wow. See? 
<laughs> Everyone was on Home Improvement, apparently. Matt was Tim Allen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The truth. Not really. Well, I worked with him for two years. He's, he's Tim and Allen. <laughs> he's, he's a piece uh, of work. I think that was Matt, what, would you, what advice would you give to your character? Oh, boy. I don't know. Um, that's a tough one. I guess... Um, I guess I would tell uh, Jack to um, enjoy the moment a little bit more. You know, he was always kind of looking at like the, the thing ahead, you know, it was always like the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. It wasn't like as focused on the, those moments um, and being present. No, that's fair. Absolutely fair. And uh, Trina, bring us home. What advice would you, would you give to your character? Oh, I, I kind of jumped it early, but I'll say it again. Just don't be so serious all the time. You know? right. <laughs> yeah. Lighten up, honey. You know, other than that, yeah. <laughs> There you go. Lynn, thank you. Great question. I think we have time for one more, so let's go out on a really fun one. And this comes from Danielle, who wants to know, what is your go-to dish to cook or bake to impress people? Ooh. Mm. What, was, what was your favorite dish to impress people to cook when you were cooking? <laughs> Baked macaroni and cheese. That's a, that's a complicated question. Well, how, 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 when you cook that, do you put a put a cracker crust on top? Yeah, put a cracker yeah, crust on top. Lots of cheddar, special turkeys, egg wow. yolks. But you gotta bake it, baby. You gotta bake it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, absolutely do. Absolutely. I'd, I'd say my, my turkey chili, which has got everything in the world in it, which mm -hmm. everybody loves, and also my lasagna. It's very good. Mm -hmm. I do so myself. I Plus love lasagna, turkey. by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have three things. <laughs> no, no, that's that's fine. That's fine. Mm. Who's, who's got another one? Well, I got, yeah. I got another cook. He, he cooked very, very well for years. And always very, very fancy, like a, a turkey, and there would be like prunes and stuffed prunes around and things like oh, that. Oh, wow. He was oh, yeah, very, very gourmet, very, very fancy cook. Well, I, one, of my, one, of my, one of my favorite episodes of St. Elsewhere was the turkey cook off between, oh. yeah, the, the, the his fancy French uh, turkey and Ed Begley Jr.'s barbecued turkey. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. That was good. That's good. So, Trita, what's yours? Oh, I got a dump cake that I make. It is so fattening, but I love it. It's just three ingredients. Apple pie filling, one layer. Cake mix on top of it and pads and pads of butter. Put it in the oven, mm. 25 minutes, 45 minutes, and that butter melts and it gets crunchy. Mm. Oh, Sounds good. It. Yeah. I'm writing that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So easy. I love that one. Uh. <laughs> Uh, nice to go on. Matt, you got any uh, kitchen uh, kitchen secret weapons? Uh, secret weapons? No, I mean, I, I, uh, I'm Italian. I love Italian food, so I love cooking pizzas and pastas and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, 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 that's probably, that. probably uh, yeah, I can also make uh, like a pounded thin uh, chicken schnitzel. Mm. I love that. Oh. Pretty good with mashed potatoes and you know asparagus and stuff. Mm. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> nice, nice. Ryder, what you got? Uh, I don't really cook, but I bake. So I, it's all bread. Yeah. So I good bread, good no. sourdough, good croissants, uh, biscuits. Those are all my special. Banana bread. No, I'm a yes. big, big. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the croissant. So oh, yeah. good on you for that. And Will, bring us home. Uh, I do a great thing. We call it ugly chicken. So <laughs> it, um, you take a big a big onion, you cut it in half, and you you stick a uh, a, a, a dowel kind of in the middle, and then you you cover it with different pieces mm. of chicken thigh that's covered in yogurt sauce and different kinds of spices, and you build up kind of a tower, and you bake that in the oven, and then you cook that in the oven. And then when you pull it out, you cut it like gyro meat. Oh, um, right. and you put that on a nice fresh pita, some mm. some good. Uh, tzatziki kind of sauces you can do something like that and uh it's 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 really scrumptious so we we're big fans nice. of that yeah. very nice that danielle <laughs> danielle thank you for that hunger eliciting question panelists this has been an absolute delight any final words for our audience before we take our leave I, think you. I would like to say if anyone has time or money to 
please donate to UNICEF for Haiti. Um, they really need help and a lot of attention down there. And thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Our pleasure. Our pleasure indeed. So, well, about nobody else. All right, then. It has been Thanks, my everybody. Hey, Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's been thank my pleasure. You. My absolute pleasure to have you all here today at the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Once oh, again, no. thank you for joining yes. us. Thank you for our audience for joining us. And thank you for your great questions. Hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care. And remember, smiles are free. Thank you, guys. Love Thanks, you. Thanks, Patty. Bye.